Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Hello, hello. Wow, I love seeing all these boxes. Hello, everyone. Look at all these smiling faces. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the abortion healing provider meeting. We are so glad you're with us today. We have a, another great topic. So glad that you're all here. All right, we're just letting all these boxes fill up, getting, getting on top of it. Okay. All right. Well, if you haven't joined us before, I'd like to introduce myself and then I'm going to introduce our speakers today. Um, my name is Lisa Rowe. I'm the CEO of this amazing organization, Support After Abortion. I'm privileged to be among you today because we know that the work uh, to support those that are hurting after abortion is far and wide. And it's you that is going to make the true impact in your community and in the lives of those that are living so close to you and so far away. And so we, uh, the impetus for this meeting was that we knew that we couldn't reach everyone um, alone. And so together we're stronger. The capacity to serve those that are hurting after abortion is so much better and, and broader when we're together. And so we've been doing these meetings for a little over a year now, and we've been listening to you and taking all the notes from the things that you're sharing with us. And, um, and we have a very strong following every uh, single month. And so this month, we are going to be talking about how to integrate a new option into your healing program through music. And uh, we've partnered with Steve and Greg to really bring about a new product for you to bring to your clients. And so um, without further ado, I want to introduce Steve and I want to introduce Greg, and then we're going to, we're going to roll it out. Um, so we're just glad that you're here with us. So Steve um, Seiler is the founder and director of Music for the Soul. I strongly recommend that after today, you go to his website and you not only hear his abortion healing music, but he has a lot of other resources for you. It's amazing. He's a multi-award winning Christian, not for profit that creates music to help people in recovery or going through difficult life circumstances. As a songwriter, Steve is a Dove Award winner has had over 500 of his songs recorded. He is the author of three books, the latest being a devotional entitled 23 based on the 23rd Psalm. So if you can help me welcome Steve, we're glad that you're here. Steve, if you'll give everybody a wave so they can see you. Look at that, everybody's giving you, it's like the little clap. I, I hope you can see all the claps. I feel the love. There. <laughs> all right, and then we have Greg. Um, he is a fellow therapist. Uh, he's been a licensed counselor for 18 years. He's the executive director of Southwest Florida Christian Counseling. He's, uh, it's a nonprofit counseling agency. He specializes in sex addiction, P PTSD within couple relationships, male specific trauma, and the impact of abortion, uh, specifically on men and women. He's an expert on identifying how unresolved male trauma is often at the root of many addictions and on how abortion affects men. And some of you may know Greg very well. He's been in our midst for quite some time, but he's specifically been in the abortion healing movement almost um, two decades. So we're really grateful, Greg, if you'll give a wave. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. You I, rec I recognize some faces. Good yeah. to be here. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Mm. So um, we're going to start by really just getting to know these guys and the story behind uh, the, the, the music for the soul portion of abortion healing. So Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I'm a songwriter by trade, professional songwriter. And after a, a fairly lengthy career, first writing music for television and then uh, writing for the contemporary Christian music industry for recording artists, uh, I felt there was a, a gap, there was a, a void, if you will, um, because I'd seen so much pain and I'd seen the power of a song to uh, provide healing uh, for people who are struggling with difficult issues. And um, it had happened, I, I would, of course, nothing God does is by accident, but my songs that had been attached to issues of pain, it wasn't because I wrote specifically for that, it just wound up happening. But when I saw the result of that, I thought, what if somebody got up every day 
and made it their purpose to look at issues of pain that were not being addressed through song and intentionally worked to do that. And of course, with the issue of abortion remorse, uh, I thought there is there's so much here that is not being talked about. It's like the abortion issue. It seemed like I'm hearing about it all the time, but all I'm hearing is arguing from polar opposite sides and, and, and the people who've actually been wounded by it, by it aren't even being addressed. And so I felt like that maybe if we could help with a song with songs, that would that would be something that would be a blessing. And the way I first found out specifically about this is I was in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, for a concert that I was uh, that I'd written all the songs for, and I had a, a, a lunch meeting with a lady who had a prayer ministry specifically to the, the abortion wounded, and she told me about what her prayer ministry was like. And after meeting her, I was so inspired by what she was doing. And when I got back to my office, I sat down and began working what was our very first uh, song on the topic, a song called We Forgive You, that is on the a Mercy Great Enough project. And then Greg and I have known each other for quite a while now. Greg's used uh, some of our other projects uh, in his counseling. And as I began to, to look at wanting to do a full-length project on this, I mean, he was a go-to consultant, uh, insisting that we not leave the men out, of course, but also, um, you know, helping me to make sure that we hit all the target specific issues that needed to be addressed on the project. Thank you, Steve. I mean, we are among a great here in his industry, and I'm so grateful, Steve, that you've been on this journey. Uh, a pleasure. Um, you know, when you, you shared a little bit about the reason behind your music and how you wanted to bring purpose to it, um, Greg, talk to us about the intersection. You know, Steve kind of shared a little bit, but like when you heard these songs for the first time, like what happened and, and, uh, and, and what did it do for you as a therapist? Yeah, well, a little background. Me and Steve go back about 20 years, and, and we've had a heart for healing music um, ever since I met Steve back at a AACC conference years ago. Um, prior to Steve, um, what I was learning in the counseling office with men is that words were not enough. Men were very defended. Um, we know with trauma, um, trauma causes people to develop walls of survival. Um, as a result of those walls, especially for men, um, they wall off their memories of trauma, they wall off their emotions of trauma. Um, and so what I learned in graduate school was I was supposed to just talk with my clients about their trauma. Well, what I was learning as time went on was talking to a guy about their trauma wasn't effective. So I started playing around with music in the counseling office. And this was before I met Steve, before uh, YouTube was out and PowerPoint presentations. I was developing them and creating slides with like these little music clips you could put in if you guys are old enough to remember that. <laughs> and, and I was starting to show my clients through the process of, of, of visual and music um, different topic issues. Um, at the time, it was mostly sex addiction issues. But what I found was I was able to get beyond the wall that a man had when he was sitting in front of me. So it was like, whoa, I discovered something. Graduate school had taught us talk therapy was the most effective to get to trauma. And what I started to see was because trauma is stored in the right brain, music was a much more effective tool to get to those areas of the trauma versus just words. Yeah, that's because melody, more left brain. Yeah, yeah. melody is processed in the right hemisphere of the brain. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And often, oftentimes I'll ask people when, when God speaks about the heart, what's the heart? And I've had pastors in my office. I've had you know, clients over the years, and they always kind of look down at their chest, and they say that uh, this is the heart, and I go, no, 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 the heart is the right brain where your trauma is stored, and so when you talk about the heart throughout biblical history, you're talking about the right brain, and so I would, I would use scriptures and kind of transpose them, and Jesus came to heal the broken heart, if Jesus came to heal the right brain, where people's trauma is stored and set them free from their trauma. Mm -hmm. So 
So it was like, oh, I, I need to have a tool to get to the right brain much more than words. And so the other thing that I found with guys is because of testosterone, they're oftentimes coming into my office because of addiction. They've gotten in trouble. They're, they're in a crisis with their spouse. They, they look at me as a male, kind of as a, someone that is a threat because of testosterone. If I show them a video with music, their defenses start to come down and they like, okay, this guy's not trying to challenge me. He's actually trying to get to some of my emotions that I've not dealt with my whole life. Um, and it's really powerful. And I'll just tell you one quick story. I was talking with a pro-choice woman the other day. She came in very defended, talking about the right to a woman's body. And of course, with the whole Roe versus Wade thing going on right now, it's a highly charged issue, right? Well, I have a right to my body, right to a woman's body, right? All that stuff. Well, I know, I know where that's coming from. It's coming from a place of trauma. So well, all I did was say, hold on a second. Let's just agree a few things. I'm going to show you a song with a video. and. I want you to just kind of share with me what your thoughts are. So as I was watching her watch the song in, in, in the music, okay, tears started coming down her face and she started to cry. And all the defenses because of her previous trauma came, started to come down by watching this video and music. And, 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 and now we could talk about her pain as a pro-choice woman. And there's no way I could have done it just through words. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. She's defended. I know where her defense comes from, her trauma. I'm just going to lower the defenses by showing her some music. And it was just a very powerful experience. One thing Greg's pointing out, I think, is that what I found with music and what lots of therapists have told me is that they'll have clients who have not been able to talk about their abuse or their experience, whatever the issue is, for literally years. And they play them one song and the tears are like that. So there's this speed of light thing that happens. It's like, and, there, and when Greg talks about defenses, there's no defense against that because of where music goes. And it, it just goes right under the door or through the cracks in your wall or whatever and opens up that heart. And then once you've got that heart open and you can put that message in, the other thing that, mu that music and songs do is because a melody is a memory device People remember 90% of what they hear in songs as opposed to 10% 10, 10 of what they're told. That's why advertisers sing to us about toilet bowl cleanser and beer and all sorts of things, right? But we can harness that power to sing a, a healing message to somebody. And if they hear it in a song, they're going to have a much harder time forgetting it. So you want to speak truth and life and healing words into those wounded hearts once you get that opening that then they can carry with them. Wow. So there's your why, why we're here today, why these two amazing men have come together to create this product for us and here and enter support after abortion. So I get to meet Steve through Greg at the last AACC conference. There was something miraculous that happened. And then here comes Karen Barbito going, we got to make this options based. We got to make this practical for all of you. And so Karen, if you'll unmute yourself and talk to us about what's transpired as a result of what um, Greg and Steve have shared with us. Yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta be really honest and say I wasn't a believer at first. I thought this is not gonna work, you know. And, and <laughs> I know Steve, um, and you know that too, Steve, because our first conversation wasn't the best. But I've been, a, I'm converted, right? Like I'm a convert because um, what we've been able to develop, um, and I'm gonna share my screen with you here in a little bit, is exactly what we're talking about. Another option for a client or somebody that is working with a client to use in order to help get people in touch with their feelings and their emotions. Because, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I shoved my abortion down and I didn't think about it for years later, you know, when I couldn't have kids and then it like was like a slap in the face, but, um, 
you know, and, and when we facilitate groups, and Lisa, you can talk to this as well, it does take people sometimes quite a, a while before they can connect with their emotions, depending on how big, how deep that wall is that they've built up, as Greg talked about. So just to let you know, I mean, Steve was great about sending over a whole curriculum of the music from Mercy is Great Enough. That was an album that you guys produced, right, Steve? And I know Greg was very instrumental in the content of that and helping to develop that program. Um, and so we took a look at them and we decided, well, let's test this out. Let's pick out a couple of songs. We'll have it available on our training platform. We'll create a really pretty journal to go along with it. And we'll do a proof of concept. Well, I'm telling you, we haven't even rolled this out yet. And over 70 people have already accessed the music on our training platform. That to me is like a, a win. We haven't even told people about it yet. And somehow they found it. So um, I'm super excited to share it with you. Can I share my screen, Lisa? Okay. I can, go for it. All right. Maybe um, um, one of our team can put in the chat feature, the link to this. It's simply, I mean, for all of you watching, it's simply training.supportafterabortion.com. And this is the landing page that you'll come to. And as you can see, we're eventually gonna have three hubs. We have a hub for a client who they can remain completely anonymous. We don't ask for a login or a username or anything like that. And we have a provider hub as well. And that's a little bit different because that's more of a training platform where abortion healing providers and ministries and clinicians and everybody that's, that wants to be a part of this um, logs in. And then there's trainings, which means that there's videos to watch, there's resources to read, and then there's a quiz that follows. But I just want to show you today, you guys can go in there and play around. There's a lot of content, but I want to show you today the client hub and what we've developed for clients for them to come in and look at and listen to and watch um, that's just for them. Anonymously, we don't know who they are, where they're from. And in this client hub, we have six options for them. Are you considering an abortion? And if you are, there are three different videos that you can watch on that abortion minded client. If you've had an abortion, it's the same thing. We have several short videos with voiceovers that they can watch and listen to about other people's experience who's had an abortion. We have our curriculum Unraveled Roots on there. If somebody wants to read it at, at their own pace um, by themselves, they can do that. We have our Keys to Hope and Healing resource on this platform for clients to go in and do it self-guided and self-paced. But here's why we're here today, as music as a bridge to abortion healing. And here it is. Here's, the, here's music as a healing for abortion healing. There's our website, our hope line. Here's the journal. I wanna show you that quickly. And thank you, um, Steve, for your input on the development of this. This is a fillable PDF. Um, so we have all of this content and we're gonna put the link to this. Either you can come to the training platform or we can put the link to the PDF in the chat as well. Just some information. Most of this information on here are lyrics from the two songs that we've selected and we've, and we've identified which song that's from. This is a, just a little um, expression of how to use this journal um, to write down your thoughts. Again, Here's more lyrics from the second song that we selected. And this comes straight from their website. And then here is the journal portion where somebody can click in and write down, you know, once they've listened to the song, what did you, what were you thinking when that happened? What did you feel while you were listening to the song? You know, this particular song talks about guilt and shame, which can you relate to the most? And have you seen shame in your, in your life relative to your abortion experience? It's just a venue for them to be able to put down their thoughts. And then here's the second song with the same reflection kind of points. Do we have time for me to um, 
Let me get out of this. Do we have time, Lisa, for me to 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 share a little clip of one of the songs? Okay, great. I think I have to share my screen again. Okay. Thank you for your patience with me and technology. Okay. While Karen's figuring this out, it's gonna be here in a minute. I just wanna remind you that there is a chat feature at the bottom of your screen if you wanna start putting questions in there for Greg, Steve, and Karen. Um, we also will take them out loud too. So once we're finished listening to this song, we'll open it up to you for those uh, questions. So I already saw Greg Mayo, you've, you've asked about frequency. I'm sure Steve will be able to answer that after we're finished listening. Yes, and so when you click into the music as a bridge to abortion healing, you'll find the song is embedded right here. And if you click on this, it also has all the lyrics. So if the person wants to read the lyrics as the song's being sung, that's an, a, an option for you. Let me know with a thumbs up if you can hear this, okay? Here we go. This is called Hitting Things by Music for the Soul.
powerful. Uh, and it's even better if you listen to it from your own computer, but that it just still, I'm, I'm sure all of you felt it. Um, you know, Karen, Steve, Greg, I'm thinking about the folks that are listening today are moved by this. And oftentimes it's not the what, you know, we get it. We, we hear the, that we need to enter into healing from different ways. We need different options, but can you tell us the how? How might this be used? How might somebody hear this today said, I'm, I buy into all of this. What's their next step? And maybe Karen, you can start us off and Steve and Greg, you can help, um, you know, wrap it around with the other things that you might've seen. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly have to defer to Greg here because he had some great comments about each of these songs and, and the applications that he uses them for. And so, so Greg, if you will talk about the shame versus guilt thing and when you would use that in your therapy and how the abortion healing providers, when would it be pertinent for them to use it in their healing program? And also for the celebration of life song that we didn't listen to. So I'm going to defer to you, Greg, to start it out. Yeah, so when I hear this song, I think I take guys back to the Garden of Eden. Um, where shame began and that first place that Adam goes out of the garden God says where are you Adam and so because I work a lot with addictions and abortion um, you know I, 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 I connect them to this reality of shame has been here since the beginning and, and men have been hiding from the beginning and how can we come out of hiding um, and then I might play that song so it's for me, what, I, what I've done with music over the years is because I've been using it for 20 years, and of course I have all Steve's projects and, and, and a lot of my other stuff, and um, I actually take clients through certain stages of healing. And in those stages, whether it's addiction healing, abortion re healing, in those stages, you choose a song along those stages and you go, okay, wait a minute that seems like a great song for that stage of their recovery. And then, and then you, you remember that. And when you're working with a client or work, you're in it working in a group and you're focused on say forgiveness, or you're focused on shame, or you're focused on that, that, that last song that your life has made a difference. Now what? It's kind of like, okay, the more you use music, the more it becomes almost like intuitive of when to use a song with a particular issue in it and the, the timing of that song. That's powerful, Greg. And we also have tried to align the music alongside of Keys to Hope and Healing. So if you know what the topic of the music is, just like Greg's saying, maybe try it as a, an integrate it into that week's session or that topic to have that in your toolbox. Um, and you know, Kelly, you ask a great question. What about the streaming part of this? Because so much of what we do is virtual. Uh, I like to play videos and things and through my zoom, but oftentimes bandwidth and streaming issues get in the way. We heard a little bit of that today with Karen. And so what I, what I like to do is make sure to provide that link to my clients so that they can listen privately and we can just go on mute and listen to it. So it's just another way of getting around sometimes those, those issues, because it is so powerful to hear it and, and hear it well. Um, Steve, do you have anything to add from maybe things you've heard in terms of application for those listening today? Well, what I hear from a lot of therapists is that a song can be a great way to introduce a topic, uh, you know, without even saying anything really, like Greg said earlier, let me play, I just want to play you something and then, we're, then we'll have a conversation. So you can introduce a topic and it also can be a way to follow up a discussion and give them something that will help reinforce that. And like I said, be that memory piece. So now you, you've, you've heard, you've told them that, and now you're gonna sing the message to them so they can carry that away. Like this, like just using your life has made a difference, which we didn't listen to. That's a song where uh, the, the singer is, is realizing that their child's life made a difference, even though they were lost to an abortion decision. So having that, your life has made a difference now connected with a melody. Maybe you've had that discussion in, in, in therapy, but now that melody reminds you of that, that positive message that you want to remember that the child's life matters and the child's life may, has made a difference and, and can continue to make a difference. That's great, Steve. Thank you so yeah. much. And a lot of the work I do with couples is like, I'll have a, a song playing 
sometimes I'll have the couple hold hands and sometimes they'll, they'll just kind of have a time of reflection. Um, and I'll, I'll ask one simple question afterwards, like what was that like for you? Just a process kind of question. And then you're silent. You don't say anything else and you'd be surprised what comes out of that discussion with that one question. Sometimes I say that music expresses the inexpressible. And in the silence that Greg is talking about, feelings are being processed that may not be easy to put into words quickly, but there is processing going on. And I think making room for that, that's something that music can do also. If I could just add something, Lisa, um, from Greg's comments um, that I read earlier, the um, your life has made a difference is really, for the abortion healing providers that are out there, is really suitable for the celebration of life or the memorial service that you have typically towards the end part of your healing journey, because it talks about that kind of stuff, bringing dignity to the child's life. And so I just wanted to put that out there because that's definitely something that you could apply for those of you that do groups in person or virtually or however you do it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, before we move into the questions, so I wanna remind everybody that you can still use that chat feature or be developing your questions to ask them out loud. Uh, what is on the horizon potentially, Karen? Leave everybody with a little bit extra um, as, we, as we get ready to answer some questions. Yeah, so here's what's coming on the horizon. Greg's gonna, I'm gonna get a big smile out of Greg. We are going to develop uh, or get some men's songs available along with a men's journal and we're gonna package it for men. Um, and so keep an eye out because we know that men are impacted. For every abortion, there's a man that's been impacted whether they know it or not. And so we're, that's our next steps is to drop the bomb for men. Yeah, and, and let, let me just say, when I was working with Steve on this project, you know, I, I, I presented to him two main topic areas for for songs for guys and I said Steve we need to have at least two or three songs of course I think originally I said more than that but you had to cut me back to a couple <laughs> but but the the most uh uh inspiring song that I helped Steve develop was um I wasn't there and and and, and that came from a lot of the experience of my my work with men of feeling like they abandoned their partner and their child at the abortion clinic. And, and, and this the healing process that has to happen when, when a guy says to, to their partner or their, their spouse, I wasn't there for you. And, and, and I acknowledge that and how can we heal together? And that song ha has been very powerful for me in, in counseling. That's awesome. So we are going to move into questions now. So uh, one of the first questions, Steve, that came up from Greg Mayo, he wants to understand, was there a specific frequency used? And I'm sure that has to do with the musicians in the room. Um, maybe there's something to, you know, important about that, but what would be your response to that? Um, I don't, he may be, I've heard some uh, discussion about frequency use because different frequencies elicit a different response. But I can tell you that in terms of, of our recording of these songs, uh, what we do with them is we let each song t tell us in, in the creation process what it's supposed to feel like and select the, the vocalist and the instrumentation and, and the process of production based on that. So, and obviously we're very prayerful in that process, but we don't actually go, okay, this is this many hertz or whatever like that. There's no we're not using any, any science uh, in the process, if that's the question, if I'm understanding correctly. I think that's where he was with that. Um, Greg, if it's not, please make sure to ask um, again. Uh, Beverly asks, uh, Greg, the CDs that you use, how can they be obtained? And, I, and um, I'm wondering if that's a Steve question too, so I'll defer to both of you. Yeah, so if you, yeah, that, that is a steep question. In, in a lot of, we, we've worked on several projects together, but a lot of the topic areas that Steve's developed in projects over the years are very specific to different topics. But, but again, you know, there's a gifting in doing this work. It's like I, I pull from, from secular, I pull from Christian, I pull from video, I pull from Steve stuff. And, and, and it's almost like the Holy Spirit kind of like, hey, that's the song you need to play right now. And then it's like, boom, you know? <laughs> and, and so there's so many different ways you can use music, but, but Steve, if you could talk 
about just all the different topic areas on your website? Well, what I would like to say about this is that on every project, we do a lot of research. We spend a lot of time talking to people, hearing their stories, a lot of time reading, a lot of time talking to the people who counsel on the issue. And we let the folks who've lived it and who counsel it be our A&R team, you know, approve our content before we record. But whenever we go to write, I always pray the same prayer. Lord, we know the target that we are feeling called to aim at. But we also know that you know where each and every song is going to go and each and every person that's going to hear it. And we don't know that. So I, I always pray that the songs are specific enough to resonate with the lived experience of the listener, but open enough that they might go somewhere else. Um, a perfect example uh, on the uh, the uh, more beautiful project that we did for breast cancer survivors. As soon as it came out, two of the first responses I got, one was from a lady who had throat cancer uh, and, and had been ashamed of her scar. And that, that song made her throw away all of her turtlenecks. Well, I didn't write a song about throat cancer, right? Uh, another woman, woman wrote and said she'd had a miscarriage and hearing the song More Beautiful enabled her to not hate her body anymore. So the way the guy can take songs out of context, there's, there's, um, there's a song on Mercy Great Enough called Stain Upon My Heart. And I was specifically writing about, when we worked on that song, we were specifically writing about the stain of abortion on somebody's heart and feeling like they could never be washed clean. Right, and we want them to know that that's that that's not true. That there, and again, that there's mercy great enough. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is whatever the stain may be, whatever it is in your past that you feel like is beyond the pale, God could never forgive this. Uh, that stain can be washed clean too. And so I invite you guys as you go around the website. By the way, everything on the Music for the Soul website streams. All the lyrics are there. But I invite you, as you think about the clients you're serving, there may be a song on another project that isn't even that wasn't even about abortion healing in my mind when I wrote it, and you'll hear it and go, "Oh, Melissa really needs to hear that." You know, it might be on a, it might be on a completely different project because let's face it, abortion remorse is grief. So we have lots of songs about loss and grief and sorrow in all the in all the topics that we deal with. So I invite you to use your imagination. And like Greg said, uh, there are songs out there that, that you, once you start thinking like this, you'll realize that there are songs you can cherry pick uh, when you hear something that you know somebody needs to hear that message. So, yeah, say, Steve, go ahead. I was gonna say, Steve, before your music addressed the abortion issue, um, there was a secular song out on YouTube that was called Happy Bur Birthday by Flipside. And you know that song, it's by an African-American singer who apparently has had an abortion in his history. And he's, he's talk, uh, singing a song about happy birthday to rap. And that song has like 10 million views on YouTube or something like that. And yeah, we've used that over the years, but then it was great to finally come around and like some other types of Christian music we can integrate into kind of our work with men. But that was our only men's song back then. Yeah, I, I love what you guys have brought to the conversation because, you know, in preparation for this, we went to the website and we looked at all of the, all of the work that was done and it was so powerful. And what we wanted to do was make it practical for use, you know, how do you put this? And so that's where the journal came in. That's where um, we are working with Steve. Hopefully these two songs take off and we can get really some, um, some just forward momentum so that we can then build out more music, maybe even change up some of the, the, um, I'm not probably even saying it, but you know, the tune and, and so that it is sometimes more relevant or relatable. And so we're, we're we really believe in this project. And, and so we hope that you take this back and, and, uh, share your feedback with us so that we can continue to grow it and, um, and make it, uh, you know, really powerful for those who need healing in support after abortion fashion, providing options uh, so that it's not just a single way to healing. Uh, Mary McCluskey asked a really good question. And Greg, I think this is for you. And Karen, maybe you can back this up. She wants to know, are there guidelines for use of when to use this, where to use it? 
she says it could bring up powerful emotions and the person may be unable to deal with all on their own. Um, should we be ready to have the music stopped if the person would like? So Greg, if you'll start us off and Karen, if there's anything you'd like to add. Yeah, so in, you know, in my training and therapy, you know, I have a, a process that I go through before I even touch trauma. Like my average client, I don't even deal with the abortion issue until about six months into therapy. I'm working on coping skills, addiction recovery, staying sober, healing the trauma with the spouse, PTSD. I'm doing all this work before I even get to touch the abortion issue or the abuse issue or whatever is there in their past. And so there is like guidelines and principles in my work of do no harm. In other words, you don't get a client coming into your office within the first month. Hey, let's talk about your abortion. Let's talk about the sex abuse you went through. You, 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 you take them through stages of developing the relationship, teaching them coping skills, looking at their family system, how healthy is their marriage? When are they ready to address that issue? So, so the using songs at the right time along those stages uh, is what's appropriate. So, so I hope that makes sense. Yes, thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate that. Karen, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I was, for the longest time, I was not a fan of having people do things self-guided for that very reason. We know that the process of going through abortion healing is painful. It's emotionally painful. And when you get to that what if stage, when you're like replaying what happened in your head, that's a dangerous place to stay. You know, and as a facilitator, what we wanna do is make sure that they don't get stuck there, that they continue through the grief and loss process. I'm starting to change my mind because we're finding more and more people don't want us to know who they are. They want to be able to do things anonymously. And the only way that we have been able to figure out how to allow them to do it anon completely anonymously is to have something on our website that they can go to independently. Um, and Mary, to address your question about turning it off, I mean, they have the ability to, to hit the pause button anytime that they want. And within the training platform, you'll see that all over the place. We have call or text or hope line. If you're struggling, they, we have our website, we have the contact form. And so the, we definitely are inviting them to reach out to us if they'd like to talk to somebody about what they're just processing through. Right. We wanna make sure we always follow our clients, never push them into places that they can't or don't want to enter into. And so um, we all often talk, Greg and I, that abortion healing can often be healing a wound. And so when we think about that, and we'll have some conversations next week when we enter into our clinical um, meeting similar to this, that when we're, we're addressing wounds, we need to be really thinking of them in a clinical manner. When we're walking alongside somebody to grow and strengthen, there's more of a coaching relationship at hand. And we're breaking that down for everyone so that we don't do more damage, like Greg said. Um, so it's really important that we always stay present to, to who and what our clients need. All right, I haven't seen other, any other questions come through the chat. Is there any questions that you would like to ask out loud while we have Steve, Greg, and Karen? Yes, I saw a hand. Olivia, we're glad you're here again. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Lisa. Hello, dear Greg and dear Steve. Oh. So good to see you guys. After good so to long. see you, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I'm just delighted. I um I wanted to ask you both because we've talked a lot about men, you and I, the three of us at times. Uh, please forgive me. I'm going to use a word in regard to the song that we've heard, and I, I think it's important because Greg, you brought up the the rapper song, and I've heard that song, and I know that's mm -hmm. a different area of of uh, attraction and how yeah. the different types of music that people respond to. My question is, and I think people might be interested in this, women respond to what Greg, you and I would call sappy, overly romantic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> how do we, uh, I know my husband, for instance, is not the kind of man who would necessarily even sit around to listen to the beauty of the songs that some of what we sometimes hear. And Steve, I know your work is gorgeous. I love to have that CD and still use it from time to time just for my own personal reflection. But do men respond well to what they perceive to be overly romantic, romanticized or emotional? Or do we wait till they're at a point when they might be open to something that would generally by men be perceived as, oh, that kind of tune? Can I tell a story, Greg? 
please. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard from a lady uh, who counsels couples who've been through an abortion. And she talked about playing the song, I wasn't there for a wife and a husband at the same time. And she said they were having trouble talking to each other about it. And the man had just really never opened up at all about it. And she said that as they were sitting in the room together and as the song was played, as it got further into the song, she saw his hand inching toward his wife. And by the time the song was over, he was holding her hand. And that after it was over, they began to talk together. And it was the first time that he'd ever spoken with her about it. So I'm not saying that that you're wrong, because I do think sometimes you need to, you know, <laughs> beef something up to get to taste is taste, right? M musical tastes differ. Uh, there's a there's one of the songs on the uh, Mercy Great Enough record, as you know, that's more of a country flavor that's sung by a man. There's another one that's a little bit more of a pop rock energy that's sung by a man. That that's deliberate. Uh, but I think that it, again, it's a matter as a therapist of knowing the right time for that couple. That was the moment that broke the ice for them and got them started. You know, talking together. And and I checked back with that therapist. That couple made it. They're still together several years later. So, you know, I think it depends <laughs> is the answer. Yeah, it depends. And, and the thing that I found interesting, Olivia, too, is I use a lot of the women's music, which is an interesting way to access the, the male's um, empathetic responses to the partner. And, and then I use the questions, what was that like, do you think, for your wife? you know, as she was going through that experience, or do you want to say something to your wife right now, now that you have more empathy, and you'd be surprised how a guy can get to empathy by hearing a song that he's never connected with before about what the woman might have experienced. Greg, I'm, and, really, I'm thinking of it, what was it me from uh, somebody's daughter? Exactly, yeah, so so the, 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 the somebody's daughter's project Project is a whole video project on um, healing from sex addiction, and there's a song in there that's called "Is It Me." It's it's a, it's a woman singing about this rejection and is it something wrong with me that you would choose pornography and all this stuff, and she's crying and, and screaming and 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 I have a guy listen to that song and you know the wow it sounds like my wife and she's screaming at me and you know but 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 what is that like for her in those moments to say "Is it me"? And can you communicate to your wife right now what that must be like in an empathetic way, all the rejection she's feeling, all this, the sense of kind of, you know, like sadness and, and you'd be surprised how it gets them there. Yeah. Can I mention something, Lisa? There's been a couple of questions about cost for the songs. And so Steve, I'm, I'm gonna let you talk about that. You know, there's an individual purchase. Um, just so that you know, we've entered into a licensing agreement with Stephen for these two songs for a year so that multiple thousands of however many people want to view it on our website can do so. Um, but what would, how would other people obtain these songs if they wanted to use them from you, Steve? Okay, there's a Mercy Great Enough page at our website. Also, all of the songs have their own individual page. So you can choose to, if you want to download any of the songs individually, they're $1.29. If you want to download the whole Mercy Great Enough record, it's, I think it's, you know, we have so many resources now. It's somewhere between $9.97 and $11.97. Uh, so you can do that either way. And, and I did create a discount for your people. So uh, you've got a discount code that you can share with them. And if they apply that, they'll get, I forget how much they get off, but they get, they pay less. 15% <laughs> off. And so when they download that for that really nominal amount of $1.29, how can they use that? Can, they can't just then put it on their website that anybody could access. So could you give some clarity on that? Well, you know, it, it's kind of the, the wild, wild west out there. And it's, it's actually the honor system at this point, because once something's out there, it's out there. Uh, we're, a, we're a small nonprofit. These records are very expensive to make, and the videos are even more expensive to make. So we appreciate when people are willing to pay. Uh, so if somebody wants to put it on their website, it would, it would sure be great if they, if they reached out and asked and maybe paid a small license fee. Uh, but in terms of private use, if, if you're counseling or working with clients, my feeling is once you if you download that song, 
it's yours to use with as many clients as you want to serve. Our, our heart is that people be served. We didn't create this stuff so that it can be hidden away. So if you've got somebody that needs that song and you downloaded it and you play it for them and tomorrow somebody else needs it, you go right ahead and use it. That's what they're for. Awesome. Okay, we have a few more minutes for some questions. Joseph, I see your questions up. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Love to hear your question. Yeah, hey, thank you very much for letting me see some of these beautiful titles you have. I'm interested in learning a little bit more about them. Um, I wasn't there, it sounds like a, a real winner, particularly for me. Um, I was wondering, you have a title here called Another Mother's Day. Yes. You know, with Father's Day coming up, and my own experience with how Father's Day triggered me before, and yeah. I've, I've come to some resolution with it. I was wondering if you ever thought about something similar for fathers. Well, of course, every time we choose to write a song from a female or male perspective, the first question we always get is, why, why haven't you got one for, you know, the other perspective? Exactly. What I would say to you, Joseph, about another Mother's Day is if you listened to it, I think as a father, everything that it references would resonate with you because the the experiences that that the mother is talking about, you know, OK, now you now you'd be 35, you know, and what would that be like? I mean, you're, you're going to have had similar reflections as a sure. father, you know, so it, it it's not that I wouldn't like to do that. My, my heart would be that we could be writing something new and recording something new every day. Right. Uh, but of course, when we're doing a project, we have to make choices. And in this case, this is, that's not a song that I wrote. That's a song that two women uh, shared about their own experience. And when I got it, it was like, oh my gosh, we have to share this. because it, it, And I've heard from so many women that it reflected their experience. I'd really be curious for you to listen and let me know if it serves you. Well. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll send you an email. And along Thank the same you. lines, um, you know, there's always the voice of the unborn child sort of resonating in my house, my heart. And I, I, I a quick look at your titles and, and the little synopses they have. Mm -hmm. Have you ever written a song where there's the child talking to the mother and the father? In uh, so many no. words? There is a, the song "We Forgive You" is the closest we've come. Yeah, "We Forgive that. You" is 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 actually sung from the first person of Jesus, and he is saying, "Your child is safe with me, and we forgive you." Okay, that's as close as we've gotten to that. I plan to listen to him. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Is there any other questions before I turn this over to Kylie? Okay, Kylie, uh, why don't you take us home? Happy to do so. I am here with um, just some closing announcements. I'm going to share my screen for a moment and try to toggle um, uh, back and forth so I can see all of your beautiful faces. Um, watch for your postscript. We, uh, we work on trying to send out our postscripts about two to three days after the event. Um, but if you are just like chomping at the bit to rewatch this experience and share it with your colleagues, it is immediately available on our Facebook page at Support After Abortion. Um, we also have added a new postscript feature where we are sharing a write-up um, of the key learnings and links from the event. If you are like me and you learn from reading things, then you may find this to be a super cool resource. Um, all of it is available on our training platform, which is a, uh, basically what we keep saying throughout our, our meeting today is that this is your kind of one-stop shop for everything that you need for your client and for your certifications and so on. So I'm going to put a link right now um, in the chat uh, that's me, Kylie Heap. I'm just posting a link to uh, where our monthly webinars live. And you can look back in time if you've missed any from a previous month or if there was a topic that was really near and dear to your heart. Uh, you can rewatch that topic at any time. And that's where we'll be putting future topics. Uh, in July, uh, our meeting switches back to Wednesday. If you're wondering why the Wednesday, Thursday, we actually did a... Um, 
a questionnaire with all of our participants and found that both days were equally um, helpful for attendance, especially with our friends who are uh, outside of the country. And so uh, we have been switching back and forth between a lunchtime and a, and a late afternoon time. Um, we will have Falero Studios and Word Among Us as our special guest speakers next month. And in the chat, I am going to provide you with a link to register so that you are in the know um, on that event. Wanted to mention if, if you are in the Indianapolis um, area, Lisa Rowe and members of our team will be at the Pro-Life Women's Conference. That conference is happening the 24th through the 26th of June. And Lisa is going to champion a, a workshop on serving others in good mental health. The title of the workshop is called Healthy Helping, Empowering Client Heroes. You would not believe how much time we spent on those five words. Um, you can learn more about this conference at ProLifeWomen.com. We encourage you to come and join us, check out our booth and come to our workshop. We are launching a clinical provider monthly webinar series. This is the perfect event for you if you are in the fields of social work, psychology, psychiatry, pastoral care, or other mental health care provider. If you're a student or you're already in that field, uh, we will begin on Tuesday, June uh, 21st with the topic, I am a social worker and this is why I regret not asking my clients about their abortions. The special guest speaker is our very own beloved Lisa Rowe, who will champion that first meeting uh, alongside Greg Hasek, who you have here today. In July, we're going to talk about the legal implications of not screening for abortions and in your intake. And in August, we're going to start talking about credentialing for abortion healing. I'm going to also put <laughs> this link uh, for you to register if you uh, know anyone or can promote this event, uh, because this is new for us, we would really appreciate your help in, in sharing and elevating it. The training platform, as, as Karen demonstrated today, is just chock full of rich materials. We're constantly adding to it. And we know that you know that we're doing so because you guys were right there the moment we started loading the uh, music curriculum. Uh, we have anonymous client level materials, including personal um, experiences. And one of my very favorite testimonies is our own Car Karen Barbito's testimony on her abortion experience. It changed my perspective. And it has been the thing that I refer to. I think everyone in this movement has that one story that changed their heart and softened it for the better. And Karen is mine. So I really encourage you to go listen to it and um, be, be opened by hearing these different stories. Um, we also have a full day workshop that we'll be launching in person in St. Louis, Missouri. It is Thursday, September 15th. We are working on providing a registration link for that. And based on the many of you who wrote to me personally, um, we have opened up a live stream option for this. Um, I, was, I was getting a little scared. You guys were very uh, persistent <laughs> in uh, wanting this to have a live stream option. Now, this is a full day uh, where we are going to provide a really concrete how-to on starting or expanding your abortion healing program. This is perfect for both beginners and advanced providers. So if you know nothing, but your heart is being persistently opened by the Lord to perhaps serve people, come. If you know everything and you don't need to know one more thing, you should still come. I promise it will be a very rich day for you and uh, your mind will be blown by what we can talk about together and achieve together in that room. If you are not hearing from us, we might be landing in your spam. Um, please check your uh, inboxes for partners at supportafterabortion.com. Um, we email all of the uh, outbound uh, content from there and uh, we would love to hear from you just as soon as possible. Awesome, Kylie, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Greg and Steve and Karen for sharing your uh, wisdom, insight and heart for 
the work that you do. Uh, Joseph and Olivia, I, I'm going to acknowledge your hands, but let you know that it's five o'clock so that if you are interested in reaching any three of the speakers today, please email them post uh, discussion today. We'll make sure that you have that information. Um, Kylie, we'll wait just a second if we have that or will that well, I'm, I'm going to share. It's going to be in the postscript how to reach them. So um, thank you everyone for being here. We do hope that you find this uh, tool very valuable and, uh, and we're, con we're committed to continuing to build the tools out so that we can provide the best and most option-based resources for our clients. So have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for having us. Good night.